that needs replacing. Hey doodles, it's Smurf here and today I am doing my little art haul video from what I bought through the January period. Some of it's just turned up, some of it's taken a while to get here but anyway that's enough bullcrap. So the first thing I bought was these Mungo soft pastels. Uh, the reason I bought them is because I wanted to see if I can use them kind of like pan pastels because I don't like the price of pan pastels. So it could be an absolute fail. If not, I'll find another use for them. But uh, yeah, I bought these off AliExpress and I also bought these off AliExpress because I couldn't be bothered paying for the, what are they called? The soft handles. If you can hear my coffee machine in the background, I've just put it through a descaling process. So Sorry about that. I have stopped using my Blue Yeti for audio because for some reason, if any of you guys know, that would be wonderful. For some reason, I can't. The, the audio from the Blue Yeti does not sync up with the video footage. So I have to keep chopping it all the time and trying to align it. And you may have noticed it in some of my other videos. It ends up sounding a bit echoey or it gets out of sync with what's going on down here. So I'm abandoning that, but I will use it for voiceovers because that's not a problem. It doesn't have to match up with what you're doing. I'm sorry, I'm such a rambler, guys. I'm trying to get better. And we'll see whether this little bit of damage here has killed any of my little bits of pastel. And I might even get out a crappy piece of paper and we'll have a look and see if they will behave like pan pastels really quickly or whether I'll have to have a play around and see what I can do. Is it pronounced mungo? Oh. I have trouble saying normal words like free and free. <laughs> oh, they slide out. Okay. okay. Okay, well it's got a cover. That's kind of a waste of carbon. Oh, might be. Oh. Oh well, they came all the way from China, so crap happens. If they work like pan pastels, I don't need them to be perfect. So we'll open up this baby and have a look. Alright, what colour shall we start with? Red? Um, looks like it might kind of work. I'll have to really give it a good rub, maybe. Maybe even at the end. Probably just need to roughen them up a bit. Oh god, my finger picks up more than anything. I do not like the textured feel. But that's alright. I might even have a play later and see what I can do with different tools I already have. Because, hey, I like being cheap. I'll just chuck that one in there since I've already used it. So that's all right. I um, actually was expecting way more breakage than that for soft pastels that traveled all the way to New Zealand from China. I'm pretty happy with that. Oh gosh, can I even get it back in? The struggle is real. Okay, don't care right now. I have been buying crap that I shouldn't be. So I've got a uh, Prismacolor Premier pencil here. And I think I paid like nine or about nine New Zealand dollars for this through Amazon, which kind of sucks, as you'll see later. And I thought I'd try the Durant Blender pens because I have tried the Durant Blender pencil that I've got. I'm enjoying that. So I thought I'd give their pens a go too. Just because, well, you know, why not? I have been buying drawing paper. So I've been using this drawing paper for a couple of days now. I've been using it for some swatches I've been doing. It's actually really nice and I like it. But I am comparing it to uh, cheaper stuff. So when I say cheaper stuff, I mean real cheap stuff. So I will show you some of the cheap things that I have here. This is my cheapest, cheapest stuff. Like Monty Mart, sketch pads, drawing pads, sketch pads. That kind of crap, right? That's what I normally use because, well, I'm a bit of a cheap lady. I want to say a word that starts with B, but I'll try to restrain myself. And this is a more expensive paper that I bought that I've been using. It's pretty good, but not that good. So I decided I would invest in some even better quality, supposedly, paper and try and find my magical drawing paper that I really like. So I bought that one, I've been using it, 
<clears throat> it's pretty good. I like it. It um, has heaps more tooth than my other papers. So that look there where you can see the tooth and stuff underneath, which I like sometimes. It's really good for that. And this is actually a piece of that paper. So you can see what I'm talking about. Exactly. Isn't that nice? So I've got that drawing paper. And sorry, I'm just trying to keep my very tiny little art nook tidy while I do this. I've bought Fabriano Mixed Media. I've heard from a lot of people on YouTube that they reckon it's really good for coloured pencils. We will see. We will see. I will try it out. I will let you know. I will do a very boring paper comparison review video. Alright, so I've been going nuts on paper. So, paper, paper, paper. So, I got the XL Canson Bristol vellum paper to try. 25 sheets for the price was pretty good. It doesn't actually feel very toothy. Like, I made sure I got Bristol vellum, vellum and not Bristol smooth, but I'm like, how? I'll just have to test it and see. It's like it's got more tooth on the back side than the front side. But anyway, I'll try it. We'll see what happens. Might love it, might hate it. Otherwise, I can always do it with more paper. I bought this pastel pad to try because I've seen people say that pastel pad is really nice with coloured pencils as well. Plus, I've bought some pastels, so I would like to play around with them at some stage. I'm full of good intentions. We'll see how far I get. And so, obviously, I've bought the 400 series Strathmore coloured pencil paper to try. Who knows how that goes. And then I've got the Strathmore Bristol Vellum Surface, which feels really smooth as well. So, I don't know. I will find out when I test them. So that's it. Big paper haul. That's all I've got for you today. Just kidding. I've been buying bits and pieces. There's nothing really you know, flash. You know, I've already bought most of the pencils you could want. I did buy the 120 set of Brute Furners, but there'll be another... They arrived this month as well, but there'll be another one about them. And I bought the Brute Furner macaron Macaroons. There's always already a video for that. We'll put that in the bottom. So I bought a few things from, as you can see here, Tokapuna Art Supplies. Oh, I like that shop. I think it's one of the better ones in New Zealand. So if you live in New Zealand, hit these guys up for some supplies. They're really good. They've got heaps of open stock pencils and stuff like that. So I decided I needed some uh, fixative. So I thought I would try the Krylon workable fixative. When I was at art school, they actually just told us to use Schwarzkopf extra, extra strong hold hairspray. I figure, anyway, it is probably a good idea. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a chemical person. So I'll just stick with the stuff that's supposedly made for it. If you uh, know anything about that Krylon workable fixative, whether you love it or hate it, please let me know below in the comments. I also decided I would buy one of these flash German pencil sharpeners because uh, I've been having a great time butchering my pencils lately. I finally, finally figured out how to use this properly, but I have uh, butchered some of my square brute pruners along the way because um, for some reason it didn't stop sharpening it. And I was just being a dumb blonde. But I got this M and R triple sharpener. I had a look at reviews online and stuff and people have said they think it sucks because you can't replace the divides. But uh, so you've got the options of just sharpening your lead, um, sharper points, blah, blah, blah. So I will show you how that works in another video when I figure it out, because it'll probably take me a week. I'm gonna need that again. So, that took forever. That will be fast forwarded, because that was boring. I bought some open stock Prismacolor from Takapuna Art Supply. As I was saying earlier, when I bought this one from Amazon, which even has an off center lid, so that's going to um, piss me off. This one appears too as well, kind of. Yeah. Right, lovely. Prismacolor. Jeez. Right, so I've got another one of them, but it cost me $3.50 from Takapuna. And I bought myself another white and a eggshell. As we probably know, or maybe we're a bit confused, we probably think I'm a bit of a swatch channel at this point. So the reason I had done that is because I wanted to get myself kind of going on YouTube in the sense of I wanted to learn how to uh, edit I wanted to learn how to speak better, which I'm still working on. Um, see, um, 
I wanted to figure out the SEO stuff better. Basically, I just wanted to get the hang of YouTube. So I decided the easiest way for me to practice editing videos, uploading them, titles, tags, all of that jazz was to just have it really easy in my head, really easy way to get it done. And that was to just unbox all of the stuff. And I thought I'd make it a little bit more helpful by making the swatches because I really enjoy doing that. My point is that my channel is more about learning how to draw for beginners right from the start. So I want anyone to be able to come to my channel who is not confident with drawing to be able to just go back to my vid videos from when I started doing the drawing lessons so that they can watch from the start and build their skills up. So that's what my channel is supposed to be about. One of my biggest tips for drawing is buy books about drawing. So even I still do this. It's not like I'm really, really good at art or fantastic or anything like that. I would call myself a very baby artist. I just like the whole art scene. And I've really been digging the colouring scene too, but I'm going to keep those whole videos separate. I really like Camilla de Erico, if I'm saying her name right. I really like her pictures. I really like her art. I just, I would be really happy if at some stage, although I don't know if I will enjoy anime as much as she does, but I would really love to turn out to be an artist like her. So, I buy books. I will uh, do another video and I'll show you all the kind of books I own for drawing. So I know it seems kind of old fashioned these days to buy an actual book to teach yourself to do something when we have things like YouTube, but it is still invaluable and it works really well for some people, better than watching a video. So my advice, buy a book, see if it helps you. I can sit here and I could draw this now because I know where to begin. You know, it's just, oh. oh. And one thing that I hate is people say with drawing, don't copy people, don't copy from a reference, all of that kind of thing. It doesn't matter if you copy artists that you really like. You will find your own style eventually. Copying artists that you like is what gets you going. For example, the first thing that I ever drew was a little picture of Yoshi the dinosaur from Mario Brothers with his little cookies because I had a little bubble gum container that looked like a cassette tape holder so for those younger people you probably don't even know what a cassette tape is you can google it and you got bubble gum in these little tiny cassette holders they were like the size of the cassettes that you used to have for your voice recorders on your fax machines and stuff like that but anyway, so it had this little tiny Yoshi and I blew it up on the page and it really looked like Yoshi. And that was the first time I remember consciously trying to draw something. So, you know, and I was full on plagiarism, if you get what I mean. But there's nothing wrong with doing fan art, as long as you're calling it fan art. But don't try and sell it. Although, I have noticed a lot of people on Instagram are selling their fan arts of Pokemon and stuff as stickers which um, I gather that must be allowed because there's so much of it going on. Anyway, if you know more about that and whether that's actually legit, please let me know down the bottom. Tell me if you do it. Have you ever been in trouble? So, yeah, buy yourself some books. Copy your favourite artists. This is one of the best ways to learn to draw is by practising, by watching others. It's not really any different from going outside and looking at a tree with your piece of paper and trying to draw a tree. The difference is you're trying to draw what someone else has drawn to understand how to draw things like that. Anyway, that's my rant. So I got that and then I thought, oh, well, it looked really cute, okay? It just looked cute and it's Camilla's, so it's cool, right? So I got this uh, guided drawing journal to go with it. I might even follow the instructions. I think I actually will. So, if you want to have a laugh at me while I try and draw hands and stuff like that, it could be a reason to subscribe. Hopefully you might learn something too, and hopefully learn from my mistakes. Oh! I'm so excited. Anyway, so that's a little quick flip through of that. So I thought that would be a good idea, and something different, like 
open up a sketchbook and it's telling you what to do rather than you sitting there going, hmm, uh, what am I going to draw? Speaking of not knowing what to draw, another thing that I bought off AliExpress, which I will share with you. This cost me like, I don't know, five, seven bucks. It's all in Chinese. Is it Chinese or is that correct? I don't know. I can't read the language. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, um, it's 10,000 Little Painter. That's what I can read on it. Does it teach you to draw it? Kind of. It's just got hundreds of little pictures of little cute animals um, and vegetables and mushrooms and everything you could possibly think of. So I thought it would be a good book for practicing. So as I was just talking about, I'm going to draw that bee and go for it. You know, it helps you learn. You can do that. You can just flip open a page and be like, right, that's what I'm going to practice drawing today. There you go. I think it would also help when you've got a little bit of art block. So when I... Oh, shit. I just knocked this dude off my shelf. Go and draw stuff you like from other people. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. Just don't sell it, okay? Sorry, I'm discombobulated. I also bought some paint brushes. I bought those paint brushes because my range of paint brushes is basically <laughs> what you see in here. I'm not really a fan of paint, but I have noticed as I've been getting older and after using water brush pens, I'm becoming a much bigger fan of watercolor. Reason being, when I was younger, I just thought it looked washed out. If you get what I mean? I just liked bright, bright, insanely bright stuff. Whereas now that I'm older, I'm appreciating watercolor a lot more. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So I've got cold press Fabriano to try. And I've got hot press Fabriano to try because I want to know for myself really what the difference is or how it makes things different for me. So these uh, brushes here are obviously probably not intended for water. Oh, suitable for acrylic watercolour and tempera. So they're um, imposter brushes. I don't know. Anyway, so I got those and I bought this set of watercolour. These watercolours I found on AliExpress. If I remember to, I'll put a link to the shop that I got them from and the listing obviously um but they were really quite cheap I think it was like twenty dollars including shipping or something like that for this so look at that 120 colors so we're gonna have fun and it's got metallics on this side so pretty cool I'm excited to try that oh my little new sharpener can go there it comes with, oh, it was a bit damaged when it got here. This bit of the box had split slightly, so I just put some white tape in there. Hey, Biggie. Came all the way from China. Give them a break. Jeez. So, it comes with more. What are these called? I'd like to say water brush pens. Water barrel pens? Water ba no, water bar barrel Eight brushes. I don't know. Anyway, so it comes with three of those, and then it's got three nice fine detail brushes, and it's got a brute Furna sketching pencil to be. So rare. Brute Furna for the win. All the time. Brute Furna coming out my ears now. So here we go. There's that. Ah, oh, I haven't finished unpacking the box though, but that, that's what you get in your little kit next to it. And like for $20? 20 New Zealand dollars. This is New Zealand dollars, guys. So, US, it's probably like 10 bucks. No, probably less. Probably like 8 bucks. I don't know. And it has got a swatch prepared for you. Which, if we have a look, does it appear to be lined up properly? White, leaf green, sky blue, cerise. Cerise, yeah. I think it's good, I'm not sure. Anyway, it seems pretty legit, and it's actually on decent paper. It's not on crap paper. It feels like water paper, watercolour paper. Which leads me on to the next bit. 12 pieces of watercolour paper comes in the kit. So isn't that darling? Oh, it's a bit scuffed. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Kawaii. Pretty cool. 
I'm really pleased with that. Probably the best value I've got. Well, we'll find out when I actually see how good the colour is. But there we go. So there's a different kit you could buy. I've noticed everybody's reviewing stuff from Grabby. Well, actually, it was Pretty Pages 71 who told me everybody was reviewing these ones from Grabby. So I went and had a look and I was like, oh, okay. But I've already bought this, so glad I found that one instead of getting suckered into that. So I'll just put that away. And also more watercolours, because we know I love Faber-Castell, right? So anyway, this is... Asian Faber Castell. I, I assume it's made by Faber Castell because it looks pretty real. I mean, Faber Castell since 1761, little stickers there. You know, um, I guess this is stuff for the Asian market. I don't know. We'll have a look, eh? Tell me what you reckon. What am I doing? Am I breaking it? I don't even know how to open this. I, d I do not understand. Oh my god. Excuse me, guys. I'm sorry. Would you just let me in? Oh my goodness. 2020, 13th of the 1st, so it was what, like two years old now? Interesting. Oh, wow, it's shiny. Oh my gosh, looks like a Faber Castle thing to do with this. Oh, it's all shiny. This must be the metallic set. I'm pretty sure, what a metallic set. So these were uh, obviously a little bit dearer than that other kit I bought. Oh wow. Isn't that nice? Guys, is this really made by Faber Castell? I think it really is. And it wasn't even that decent there. It's got Faber Castell on the watercolour barrel. This must be real. I thought they were going to be like knockoffs. This is obviously... Does that sound racist if I say Asian market? Asian market? I don't mean it to be racist. I'm not racist at all. Oh, look at my thumb prints. I'm so dirty. Oh, my God, guys. Isn't that the cutest little thing ever? I'm sure you guys have seen stuff like this before, but I haven't. So I think that is just the sweetest thing ever. I'm almost in tears. I think it's so cute. Why do I get giddy like that about things? Does that come out? Or do you unclick it? Or do I unclick? It doesn't look like it all. Oh. It probably does. How do we do it though? How do we release it? Oh, does this come out too? I'm really just very curious. Sorry guys. I think you can like slip that off when you're very careful. I'll break it. Yeah, it's it's moving sideways. So you must be able to slip it off and wash it. Oh my god! I think that's so cute. I, I already love these. I'm just going to start using them. Did they swatch them on there? themselves or is that printed? I can't even tell. I think it's printed. M54, M52. I don't think these codes are going to work with what I've already know of the Faber Castle color code, but I will research and find out for you. So you don't have to. So, oh my god. Uh, we're gonna I think we're gonna have the same problem again here Or maybe not so much because it's larger. Yes. Now that's how that one should have worked out Forty eight so obviously got 24 metallics there Oh, I 
I'll just have to translate translate this with my little Chinese translator. I think it's Chinese. It looks like Chinese to me. I don't know. Oh, you yes, see, they do come up. <sighs> Look at this, guys. This is so cool. So same thing again. Has this got paper casting on it? It does. <gasps> anyway, guys, that is all I have for this month for my art haul, except... I'll just quickly show you because that's me. Maybe if I didn't. I got the Brick Fruity Squares. I've been playing with them, swatching them, trying to make my own order for them, trying to translate the names to using a Chinese translator. It's taken me ages. Sorry, guys. I'll get it out when I get it out. But so I got them and these, yeah, you can see the pencils are kind of butchered. But that's okay. And. I got brick from the macaron colors really really cool pencils check out my video if you haven't or anyone else's on youtube i don't care um but i like them so much i bought two sets this month so naughty but anyway so i don't think i'm going to probably need to buy any more art supplies for months now if not years so yeah watercolors coming out my ears and the paper caster ones. I think they're real. Please tell me they're real. So I've got those. Yep. That's the art one done. Do not even ask me how much I spent. I don't even want to know how much I spent. It's all coming out of savings. Which I probably shouldn't be using. But anyway. So that is that. I have another video that should probably come out at the same time this one does. Or within a day or so. And it is... A coloring book haul that I ordered in December I think it was but it's turned up here in January so I'll be showing that and I'm also going to be putting out a video on my Johanna Bassford collection that I haven't even started coloring in but there's a story behind that anyway that's all from me today guys unless I'm simultaneously releasing videos for some reason and yeah until I see you next time keep on doodling <laughs>